Uh, as we begin our message for tonight, I just want to ask you, does anybody know what these are? <laughs> Is there anyone here that could not live without your phone? <laughs> okay. Obviously, that's a yes. We all know what it feels like. Believe it or not, young people, there was a day when these things did not exist. Yes, yes. In fact, when they first developed the cell phone, and I wish I had one with me here on the stage tonight, when they first developed the cell phone, you literally had to hold it with both hands. It was so big. And when they came out with those nice new, brand new flip phone, you know, you could fold it down and it would flip out even longer. So it was fantastic. Those phones were great. But you know, what an amazing invention. I have an iPhone. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that we could have lots of debates about which phone is the best phone, but we don't need to worry about that tonight. But we all know how important these have become to our everyday ability to stay connected, right? I mean, what would we do without text messages, internet browsing, Facebook, um, apps, everything that we have on here? You know, this little, this little machine can do just about everything that 10 or 20 other things used to be able to do. There's so many things. I have a camera, a clock, a calculator, a flashlight. I have a calendar, my internet browser, um, a, cal a contacts list, my music, my radio is on here, Pandora, iTunes, games, podcasts, whatever. You name it, you can get it on your smartphone. Now, let me ask you something. I have another one here, and when I push this little button, nothing happens. Right? What's the difference? <laughs> now, this phone can do everything that this one can do. It's designed exactly the same. It has all of those things on it, pictures, clock, flashlight, games, calendar, phone, you name it, it's on here. It's on this one too. The difference is that this phone is not charged. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I never like my phone to not be charged or lose power. What if you're out there somewhere in the world and you have to text and your phone is dead? If you're like me and you see that, that bar going down, you start to panic, right? So my, my best friend is this little thing right here. And next to this is this little one that actually goes in the lighter of my car, so just in case I'm not somewhere where I can plug into a wall, I can always plug in in my car. So I am never without my power cord. And if I forget this, it's like a dev devastating experience. I carry it in my purse. I have like three or four of these. I keep one at my office, one by my bedside, one in my purse, an extra one in the car. We need our phones, right? We don't want to be caught without them. We don't want to lose a charge. These are important for us. And you know what's great is that these have a battery as well. So once you charge it up, you can take it for quite a while without having to charge it again, right? They're awesome. But I want to ask you, if I don't plug it in, if I don't plug it in, can this phone do what it was designed to do? No. Can I use it for anything if it's not charged? Maybe a paperweight, right? Maybe a personal defense uh, mechanism, I don't know. But it doesn't have a lot of uses when it's not charged. And you know, there's something else that's important about these things. They're only valuable if we use them, aren't they? You know, every tool needs a master. 
And that reminds me of a Bible passage that I found recently in my reading in the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 15. And it's, it's the prophet talking to the people about how God acts on behalf of his people. That anything that God decides to use becomes a tool in his hand. But here's something very important. Without me using it, this tool has really no value. If it's not charged or if it's just sitting there, it's not worth very much. But the prophet says in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 15, can the axe boast greater power than the person who uses it? Is the saw greater than the person who saws? Can a whip strike unless a hand is moving it? Can a cane walk by itself? Are any of those things possible? Well, you're conflicted. Not really, because they're tools. They need a master. Those tools need someone who's going to use them to help them to do what they were designed to do. And this is what we have been learning about this whole weekend that we've spent together, that we, unless we are plugged in, unless we are plugged into our source of power, our connection with Jesus Christ, we will not have what we need to be everything that we were designed to be. But you know, every one of us has the potential to be everything that we were designed to be. You have an amazing potential to be more valuable and to do more functions than this iPhone could ever do. We have the potential to do that. You are valuable. But I want to talk about the first passage that we introduced our series with this weekend on Thursday night, and I know some of you weren't there, so I'm glad we can go back to that passage found in 2 Peter. If you have your Bibles, open them with me. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, and this is where we learned where the power comes from. It says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through a knowledge of Him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these things he has given us his great and precious promises so that through them you, me, we may participate in the divine nature and escape corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith. You know, when you think about plugging your phone in, you watch those little bars of battery increase, don't you? You want to make sure you always have at least one bar, a sliver of a bar, and a full, full charge is even better. All those bars lined up together. That's how you know where you are, how much more talk time you have, how much more use you're going to be able to get out of your phone. That little bar can go up and down, but we want it to go all the way up, and this is what it says, add to your faith. This is talking about plugging in. Plug in, add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, just like the charge on your battery, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been designed for a very special purpose. You are an amazing creation. You are designed to be used by a master. You are a tool. You are special. But if you don't plug in, you might find yourself being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't want that to happen. Listen to what it says. If anyone does not have them, in other words, if anyone doesn't have these qualities, if you don't have goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and love, if you don't have those things, does the Bible tell you if you don't have them, then you are a failure? You're a waste. Is that what the passage says? 
For those of you who have your Bibles, you know that's not what it says. What it says is, if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. If you don't have these qualities, it doesn't mean that you have failed. It doesn't mean that there's no hope for you. It doesn't mean that you are useless and that you don't have a purpose. All it means is that you have forgotten that your past sins have been cleaned. You have forgotten where the source of power is. That you have been nearsighted. You know what that means? That you can't see past your own situation. You can't see past your own ability. You can't see past the circumstances of your life. And that has made you forget that you have a Lord, a Master, a Savior who has power to give you everything that you need. And then it says, therefore, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. Be all the more eager to plug in, all the more eager to add these things to who you are, all the more eager to allow God's power to change you, to mold you, to make you effective and productive in your life so that you can be and do exactly what you were designed to be and do. These qualities, the Bible tells us, will keep us from being designed for greatness, but useful for nothing. May that never be said about anyone under this tent that you were designed for greatness and useful for nothing. But you know what? A phone that's not been charged is just like that. Designed for greatness, but useful for nothing. That is not your calling tonight. It is not your place to be designed for greatness, but useful for nothing. But in order to have these good things, this list that we read, added to your faith, in order to have these good things coming out of you, the power has to be in you, doesn't it? In order for it to come out, the power has to be in. But I want to encourage you tonight, because some of you might be thinking, boy, that list is pretty daunting. How can I always be good and brotherly kindness, perseverance, self-control? I mean, most of us have failed on, on several levels on this list already. If you're discouraged by that, I want you to remember that when we plug into the power of our knowledge of Jesus Christ, when we know him, when we spend more time with him, the more we know him, the longer we stay plugged in, the more our battery charges. It's like charging our phone. It may not happen overnight. You may have to plug in for long periods of time and day after day after day repeat that process of plugging in. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen all at once. The more you plug in, the more bars of power you will have in your life. And don't give up. And there's more good news. There's more good news for all of us tonight, and that is if you have been unplugged for a while, and maybe if you've never plugged in, the good news is that this phone has everything it needs and at any time, if I want it to function like it's designed to function, I only have to do one thing. And what is that? Plug it in. That's right. All I have to do is plug it in. So if you want these things that we've talked about, I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to plug in. Not to worry about what's happened in the past, not to worry about what's going to happen in the future, but to plug in and trust that as you pursue a knowledge and a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, that he will keep his promise and that you will have everything you need for life and for godliness. Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions and I need you to answer me. Whose divine power gives us everything that we need for life and godliness? Jesus, that's right. The life-giving power of the word of God is a testimony about who? Jesus. And by whose authority do we have a restored, direct connection to the power of God in our lives? Jesus. And who has cleansed us from all of our sins, has chosen us, and is waiting with open arms for you to come in to the kingdom of heaven? That's Jesus. Now I'm going to ask you one more question. 
Who is all of this available to? <laughs> this is available to you, to me. This is available to anyone who is willing to plug in, to anyone who is willing to read the scriptures in search of a knowledge of Jesus Christ, in search of a relationship with Jesus Christ, to anyone who is willing to connect their will with the will of God through Jesus Christ before the throne of God, to anyone who is willing to start today, no matter what happened yesterday, to plug in and to charge that battery. If we really understood, if we really understood who Jesus is, and if we would really believe it, the Bible tells us that we would find that nothing is missing. And if anything is missing, it just means that we have room to know him more. If anything is missing, if there comes a time in your life when you're struggling and you remember, man, Pastor Leah said that I would have everything I need, but I don't have everything I need. What's going on? Is God failing me? I want you to just remember this one thing. If you don't have everything you need, the Bible tells us it's simply because you have forgotten who your Savior is. It's simply because you have forgotten who Jesus is and what he has done for you, that he has cleansed your past sins. If you don't have everything you need, it's simply because your circumstances and your own will and your own struggle is blinding you to understand the complete love and salvation and the complete power that Jesus is willing to pour into your life. And I don't want you to judge yourself at that moment. I want you to remember to plug in because it just means that your battery is low. It just means that you need to be reconnected. And I hope that after this weekend that you would not wait until your batteries have run out to plug in, to be recharged. I hope that you will not wait until you can't hold your breath any longer, until you're gasping for air to take in a breath of new life, of fresh air. And I hope that you would carry your power cord, Jesus Christ, with you all the time so that if your battery does get low, you can always plug in to the power source of the God who made you and loves you. We would do that for our phones, wouldn't we? Do you know what the last thing I do every night before I go to bed is? I plug it in. And I do this every day. Nobody has to force me to do it. But I want to ask you, whose job is it to plug in my phone? It's my job. Whose job is it to plug in your phone? It's your job. In other words, Jesus has done everything that he can do to offer you everything that you need for life and for godliness at any moment, at any time in your life. He has provided it. He has given it to you. And now there's only one thing that remains. There is only one decision that you must make, and only you can make it. And that is, are you going to accept his invitation? Are you going to plug in and to receive the gifts that he wants to bestow upon you. That is my question for you tonight. That is my question for you this weekend. And if your answer to that question is yes, I would like for you to stand with me tonight. If your answer to that question is yes, are you ready to plug in? Are you ready to charge up? Are you ready to breathe fresh air and new life? Are you ready to experience that lightning power connection to the God in heaven? If you are ready to find out what it's like to have everything that you need for life and godliness, I want you to stand.